Hey, it's your boy Seth and Philip. That's on me the, on on the other Izzy. Izzy. Uh, coming at you live with episode three after a week long hiatus, or or maybe not. I mean, it literally has to be unless we time travel. <laughs> um, <laughs> It'll be a two week hiatus. You don't know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> today's episode is covering exciting topics like. Pennsylvania. Whoa! Grunge. Fuck yeah! And our surprise mystery topic chosen by Philip. You're gonna hate me even more than you hate me already for making you listen to grunge. Oh, not possible. Oh, it is. Oh, be ready. <laughs> I swear, if it's another grunge song, it's not. It's not a grunge song. <laughs> And that's our show, everybody. Come back next week. <laughs> it's actually a post grunge. It's Nickelback, actually. <laughs> uh, okay, well, that's uh, that's fine. I like no. Nickelback. Wow, of course you do. <laughs> that explains so much. That explains all of your bad taste. Uh, <laughs> what, what's wrong with Nickelback? Hey, Nickelback has one good song that they do over and over and over again. They've got a couple good songs. I, I, I will admit, I do like um, Rockstar by them. I like Rockstar. I mean, like I like making fun of them. I like making like, fun of photograph. I I do genuinely enjoy most of the. If music. someone gave me free tickets to a Nickelback concert, I would go. I pro- I mean I probably wouldn't. <laughs> um, Damn, who's the real not a fan but doesn't hate them that much? <laughs> heard it heard it here first. Philip's a real Nickelback oh. fan, and I'm not. Yeah, man, I'm so proud for this honor. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, Pennsylvania, uh, that's our first topic, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'm a Southern boy. I've been outside of the South like twice in my life, once to California and then once to the East Coast to visit you and your, your turf. Uh, so I've been to Real Delaware. <laughs> I've been to Delaware, Pennsylvania, New York, and I feel like somewhere else maybe. I don't remember what all we did on that trip, but, uh, DC, DC, yeah, I've been to DC, no, wait, okay, I lied, I've been out of the South three times, I've been to DC twice, uh, I'm a liar, I'm a filthy liar, I'm sorry, but, uh, yeah, so I've been to Pennsylvania for about eight hours, and that's generous, but that's, that's my exposure to the state, um, it seemed nice, yeah, I, I mean, (laughs) that's it, (laughs) yeah, I, I'm from Delaware. I, I've grown up right over the border from Pennsylvania my entire life. It's, I don't know, Delawareans' relationship with the uh, the Great White North is uh, <laughs> very complicated. Great White North? Um, Pennsylvania. Is that what they call it? No, it, I, I'm trying to be funny. Oh, well, um, you went over my head. I'm a dumb Southern boy. I don't know what they call things up there. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you and your, your dumb shit. Alabama education. Look at you. Yeah, who who goes to the University of Alabama for school? Not both of us or anything. Nope. <laughs> not, it's not like both of us have degrees from there or something. But, like, I mean, Pennsylvania Pennsylvania's like our brothers. Uh, originally, Delaware was actually a part of the colony of Pennsylvania when, like, Penn, uh, William Penn landed on the shores. He landed at, on, uh, like, at Delaware. And then Pennsylvania was that entire complex of Delaware and Pennsylvania. Uh, and we, we were actually like the luxury destination. We were the place where all the beaches were, where all the trade came in. But we were like off to the side. So nobody really cared about us. And we much were like today. Yeah, much <laughs> like today. So we were pissed off. And we we're like, we don't have any representation in Philadelphia. But you keep on treating us as like a, a place to be used. We want to have our own sort of legislature to to govern ourselves. So we broke off and we we became our own territory. So there's kind of that like there are brothers, but also they're like those uppity folk up north who like we broke away from. And so we we also uh they we were the first state and they're the second state. So we always like to to have that one up on them. Some good old sibling rival rivalry. I can talk. I mean, doesn't stop us from cheering for for Philly for all of our sports. So, yeah, Bill, we have any like, yeah, you know, the Blue Hens, right? That's the or well, what's okay. The so our our sports, we we have we only have semi pro teams. Oh, we so have, you don't uh, you don't matter. 
well, yeah, we, we've got the Blue Rocks in, in baseball, and we actually just won our league this year, so... Uh, oh, good for you. No, legitimately. I, I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm a Pats fan. I'm a Yankees fan. I'm a Crimson Tide fan. I'm, I'm the worst kind of sports fan, but there is not a single sports team in the entire world that I will cheer more passionately for than the Wilmington Blue Rocks. I, I would... I would sell my soul for a will uh, for a Blue Rocks championship. There you go, man. I I feel like I would ask for a little bit more for a soul deal, but whatever works for you, man. I mean, uh, it's it's a figure of speech. Is it uh, though? <laughs> you you might be getting a letter tonight with uh, it's all dark and has like red blood lettering I, on I, it. I, 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 it's like I heard your offer. I'm intrigued. Oh no. <laughs> um. I'm a ginger. I don't have a soul. It's fine. Ah, uh, you already now, yeah, man. Nothing to sell. But then we we also have uh, the blue coats who are a uh, basketball team. They're pretty cool. I've been to a couple <laughs> games there. They've got like this state of the art uh, practice facility for the Sixers that they they run out of. Then we also have uh, the the blue hens, which is our our University of Delaware. Uh, so blue rocks, blue coats. And blue hens, and then our rugby team, which is uh, the Black Foxes, and they just they, they, they broke the trend. Wow! They screw us over. Damn! <laughs> I like how instead of talking about Pennsylvania, we're just talking about Delaware now. Correct. <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, look, it's got the Liberty Bell, got Ben Franklin. Okay, wait, no, Rocky. that's that's actually Rocky. Yeah, Rocky. I'm, I, I can't. okay. So the Philadelphia Art Museum is actually super cool. I I love it. But I cannot go there without running up and down the steps. See, I'm um, sad. We were, we, were, we were trying to go to the steps, but we just never got a chance to. I, yeah. I, still think I haven't seen the Rocky steps. I'm so dis- – next time you come, if the world is not still – Yeah, in like six terrible. years when I have money to go on a trip, I'll uh, – Exactly. There you go. Well, I'll, I'll get to see the Rocky series. That was like the one thing I wanted to do in Pennsylvania too. But like no one else really wanted to do it, and then we just ran out of time. Yeah, I felt bad. Me too. Okay, I I have a question. Mm-hmm. So, like, when when we're studying the founding fathers, uh, like just in general history, we we learn a lot about Ben Franklin. Like, there's a huge emphasis put on Ben Franklin, and I've I've kind of got the feeling, being in the South, that not everyone has that same sort of focus. I mean, I definitely did, but also remember I was homeschooled yeah. growing up, and like that's true. And, like, basically all my mom taught me was American history. That was, like, the only thing I actually learned. Uh, mm-hmm. So I learned the shit out about all the founding fathers and presidents. And, like, but Ben Franklin was a big one. I also gotcha. watched Liberty's Kids. Ben Franklin was a main character in that show. Good show. Oh, yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, we, we learned a lot about Ben Franklin, Jefferson. I, I, those were really the ones we – like, Washington, Jefferson, Franklin, John Adams, who I hate. And I, I used to really like John Adams, but as I've gotten older and been able to like actually understand the things he's done, he I'm like, oh, a bitch. Wait, no, that was, that was pretty bad. Like, he did some real bad things. And then also yeah. like, he was just bitchy about him. Yeah. Like he was like, like he was so butthurt about being vice president. Yeah. Like he was like, this is the most stupid position. This shouldn't even be a position. Blah, blah, blah. I should be president. And he became a president and he was terrible. Had the first presidential scandal. Yeah. Created the Alien and Sedition Acts, which were explicitly <laughs> against the Constitution. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Adams is not super swell. Uh, yeah. not, a, not a great dude. But, yeah. Pennsylvania, there was snow there when I went there. Uh, I was on spring yeah. break. There was still snow on the ground. That's, uh, there was Liberty Bell. That was cool. I did see the Ben Franklin Museum. That was fun. It was like 10 bucks, I think. Which surprised me because I'm used to museums being free. Um, yeah. And that that was like a small Franklin Museum too. Like, I was I was very surprised at the price. Um, oh really? Yeah. I, I, well, that was like where one of his homes was, or were, or something, right? Yeah, it was it was in a very historic district there. Philly's a great city. I adore Philadelphia. I'd love to actually visit there. I, I like that little yeah. marketplace we went to. Reading Terminal, yeah, yeah, that, that was cool. I enjoyed, awesome. That was really fun. I would love to go back there again and like spend more time there. Um, for, for those for those that don't know, it's it's an old train station that was converted into a marketplace. 
it's got all sorts of shops and businesses and stuff. It's super cool. Really fun, especially a lot of like food, deli yeah. kind of things, like a huge variety of different like cultural foods and stuff. It was really cool. I definitely enjoyed it. I wish I had like I, I wish we'd like gone there like for food or like yeah. you know like with a purpose in mind because like I would have loved to spend more time there. But that was that was a lot of fun. Agreed. Well, we'll, we'll go again, Seth. We'll we'll get a small select crew to go. Let's yeah no let's let's do it next time. We're 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 all capable. <laughs> yeah, so in about fifty years, and we're retired if we get to retire. Exactly. <laughs> Who knows if Pennsylvania will even still there? Yeah, might not might there. not exist anymore. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, just, Delaware will take it back. It's like we're in charge now. Well, I mean, we'll we'll need to when the oceans rise and. It's too big. <laughs> um, <laughs> the Delaware revolt. Yikes. Uh, I mean, we can't talk about Pennsylvania without talking about the Amish. Um, yeah, vanilla ice. Yeah, but and vanilla ice. <laughs> he lived with the Amish <laughs> for two seasons. I, I don't know when. Like my my memory my like memories of Pennsylvania are so like intertwined with going to Lancaster to my aunt's house and going through Amish country, having to go around horse and buggies like fifty times every time you're driving around. Um, yeah, 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 I never had that experience. My, I think my biggest uh, connection to the Amish is a uh, Weird Al's Amish Paradise parody of Gangsta's Paradise. Very accurate song, by the way. Uh, really, gives I, you I, I felt a lot of authenticity there. Might as well be like an official documentary. I'm gonna be honest. Have you seen the music video? It's, it seems pretty spot yeah. on, man. Yeah, absolutely. The chair and um, water once or twice. Pennsylvania small towns do also have a, a very distinct look to them. It's a lot of very Tudor architecture, a lot of very it, it's rural, but in a, a very a very distinctly northern rural way. I know I remember like, seeing lots like, of brick. Yeah, a lot of brick. It, a lot of super cute towns. I was I uh, for my um, cousin's wedding. He got married and uh, he got married in Lancaster, and all of the reception stuff was in this small town called Lidditz, and mm-hmm. just the cutest little town. But the hotel we stayed in was an old chocolate factory, and it was it was just converted into this luxury hotel, and it was super cool. Did they it keep like, like the chocolate a- factory theming at all, or? Yeah, that's pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, there was. There was still, it, it, it was like your generic Midwestern red brick, like, factory. It kind of looked like the outside of, of Willy Wonka's chocolate factory. That's pretty cool. And I, I enjoyed that. from what I understand, there's, like, a lot of cool uh, recording studios there, too. I think Ariana Grande goes there to record some of her stuff. Hmm. But super, super cool. It's pretty interesting. And then you, you have... You have the other side of the state, which is so different from, uh, I mean, the the eastern side. You've got mm-hmm. Pittsburgh, and and that that's real Amish country out there. Just rural Pittsburgh is like a uh, factory America. shit, right? Isn't yeah, Pittsburgh known for like factories yeah, yeah. and pollution and shit. Well, that's where uh, Rockefeller did all his his the uh, well. Rockefeller and Carnegie made their businesses, and it had a whole bunch of steel. That's why the mm. Steelers are there. Yeah, um, they steal things. Correct. Shank. It's a mugging. I'm mugged, you said. Oh, oh. Well, I mugged. didn't know we were in Philadelphia. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't a yeah, I, wow? I almost asked the stupidest question in the fucking world. <sighs> I almost asked, isn't Always Sunny set in Philadelphia, even though the full title of the show is Always Sunny in Philadelphia? Nah, I don't, <laughs> I don't think so. I, I, I think, think it's in actually, Los Angeles. You're thinking of LA. Yeah, no, but it's an no, ironic title. My, my freshman year, I would actually watch Always Sunny when I was feeling homesick <laughs> because I, just seeing the streets of Philadelphia made me, made me think of home. Always Sunny, it's one of those shows that, like, whenever I watch it, I'm like, this is funny, but I can never, like, make myself watch it. Yeah. Like, it's one of those things where it's, like, it's, it's, it's really good, it's really funny, but, like, also, it's so dark, and I'm just, like, I yeah. gotta be in the mood for it. 
the, I'm like, I rarely am. There is no show that that better fits that like dark comedy bent as always Sunny does. Yeah, because um, like I mean, you have shit like South Park and Family Guy, but they go more for like I, I think in part because of their like because they're animated, like it's either less severe or it doesn't seem like you can just like uh, it usually just comes off as dumb, gross out, gross out humor anyway. But like. I was just saying, like, Always Sunny's, like, because I, I think maybe in part because it is live action, it comes off a lot more cruel. Like, it's still funny, but, like, yeah. it's a lot more, like, oh, these are real people. <laughs> like, they're actors, obviously, but, like, these are real people who <laughs> these terrible things are happening to. Well, Family Guy and, and South Park, I mean, are they're very rooted on the references they're making. It's very much a sort of... Uh, oh, what's the word? A, a parody-esque show. You're it's supposed to suspend your yeah. belief for, yeah, for the satire, for the commentary. Whereas for Always Sunny, it, it's kind of positing to you, okay, this is a similar world mm-hmm. in which, I mean, it, it, this is all real stuff that's very, very tragic. Yeah. And like, and like they... Uh, what I, what I do love about the show though is that they just they they, they don't have any shame. They do just, they just go balls to the wall. And, like I respect that a lot. Well, it's just like not something I can always watch. Like I really have to be in the mood for it. And I every single time I try to explain this to somebody, it it comes off wrong. But I I do have to I I gotta give the show credit of that is exactly like what people around where i grew up are like like that, that is a very <laughs> mid-atlantic i mean obviously people don't like people aren't as as awful as the characters on the show but it, it's it, there is very much that sort of just attitude of of life that a lot mm. of the characters have i definitely can recognize that uh in a lot of people i know like that that show man that like from the very get go like the very first episode is all about like Mac keeps saying the n-word that's the pilot yeah. <laughs> yep. like that was the fucking pilot like yikes they they go all in like jesus man like, i i respect that show and i do enjoy it but it's like i said it's it's hard for me to watch like i have like someone has to like be like oh let's watch them always sunny for me to watch always sunny i'm not just gonna go out of my way on my own to watch it mm. it's like i kind of want to because like, like it's, it's well written yeah and like danny devito is great um well they're all great all the actors are great on it and i mean the thing i i the thing that really gets me about watching always sunny is if you watch it for too long it it definitely affects your your way of thinking like mm-hmm. it, it desensitizes you and and so you'll like just fucked up shit will will come up in your train of thought and i'll be like i've been th- this should not be occurring naturally to me like <laughs> i've been watching too much of always mm-hmm. sunny like and it's weird to me too because like i watch some fucked up movies and stuff like particularly in like the horror genre and stuff but like i i think it's almost because always sunny is a comedy still that it like yeah. kind of throws me off that, like cuz yeah. like if it's a horror like i'm expecting these terrible awful things to happen like a comedy yeah. like i'm laughing oh but these are terrible things but it's still funny so i almost feel bad for laughing well and i i think it is also a habit of uh or a factor of uh it's posited as a a slice a slice of life show these characters are going through regular lives that could happen to any anybody and then outrageous stuff happens but it's never really outside the bounds of of reality a couple of things yeah <laughs> i mean yes there are definitely yeah but but with horror i mean you go it, it's kind of like watching it's almost like watching something fantasy like i'm expecting something that whether it's within the realm of reality or not like I'm I'm supposed to be suspending my disbelief. Yeah, like it's not a documentary, and like I mean, not that Always Sunny is either, yeah. but like it's a different mindset you go into when you go to watch a horror film as opposed to a comedy. Yeah, like it's it's, it's two different mindsets. So yeah, yeah, definitely. But uh, yeah. So are we? I guess we're reviewing Always Sunny at this point. <laughs> I pretty much. <laughs> That's Philadelphia uh, in the title. I 
Well, I, I well, let, let's bring it back around. Uh, best Pennsylvania restaurant, Tony Luke's, all the way. Specifically, I, the one on uh, East Oregon Avenue, Philadelphia. I liked that one random German stand I ate at at the fucking marketplace. And I got some like sauerkraut on a sausage thing. That was yummy. Yeah. Oh, what was that? Uh, oh, Philly cheesesteak is a thing. Yeah. I, I, you, you took us to that like sandwich place. And I Tony got, like, Luke's. A, oh, is that Tony Luke's? That's oh, I have the been there I was then. Just talking oh, about. well, yeah, yeah, I like that then. Cool. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, that was good. I, I had the that was my first Philly cheesesteak. I had it, like on a sandwich though. I don't know if that's how you're supposed to have it, but it was yummy. Yeah, I liked it. It was good. Um, Rocky. Rocky. <laughs> yeah, that's all I got, um, man. A- Allen Tal- uh, Allentown by Billy Joel. Great song phenomenal song i don't actually know if i know that one and we're living here in allentown i'll i'll make you listen to it later okay i'll 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 put a link in the description so you (laughs) all at home can enjoy it too just follow along with me as i listen to allentown by billy joel that's who you said right i can listen correct i have ears technically (laughs) All right. Uh, anything else on Pennsylvania, Seth? Do we got anything we can... I think we, we hit all the good stuff. <laughs> all of our Pennsylvania viewers, all one, maybe? We might have one of them. <laughs> you get very mad at us. Like, how could you forget this thing? Well, I've been there for eight hours in my life, so... <laughs> oh, uh, also, one up we have on, on Pennsylvania, no sales tax in Delaware. Oh, God. I was wondering can't, when that was going to come up. Beat that. You, t- you know what? You 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 lasted till episode three to to bring that up. I'm proud <laughs> of you, Seth. You're you're getting better. You're oh, improving. Shit. Um, what's the other one like Nebraska or some shit that doesn't have sales tax? It's I think it's like Nebraska, New Hampshire, Montana, Oregon, and Alaska are the the others. I think. What am I thinking of? There's something that Delaware and Nebraska have in common. I don't remember what it is. I don't know. The world will never know. If you know what the what the similarities are between the, the Nebraska and Delaware, let us know in the comments. Um, yeah, I, I I guess I'm pro Pennsylvania. It seemed nice. Yeah, I I, I guess I would say uh, I, I yeah I'm I'm pro Pennsylvania. Yeah, too mostly because of Philly. Uh, <laughs> that's the only place I've been. So that's the only reference I have. Um, I like Rocky. <laughs> that's all I got. That's all I know about Pennsylvania. I saw the bell. That yeah, was yeah. cool. Um, all right, so you ready to dive into grunge and have this bloodbath again? So, uh, today we're talking about, um, Weezer. Uh, Weezer's actually really good, but not grunge. Not at all. My, my, my favorite grunge song, Gold Digger by Kanye West. <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> uh, um... I don't know. I was. Okay, gonna, I don't. So know. I mean, I. I guess. I, I mean, I. I guess I'll start in on grunge because. Well, all right. Should I? All right. I'll. You know. I'll just say it's my favorite genre. Seth hates it because he hates me. Um. And that's. Uh, yeah. That's. Yeah. I. I gave him a shopping list of songs. He didn't finish it because he's a bitch. But he got through some of them. I guess. Give me your wrong thoughts, Seth. Okay. Uh. So grunge is trash, and Philip likes it because he is also a piece of trash. I am a piece of trash, but floating in the wind. Good. Okay. No. So, I I can definitely see the appeal of grunge. It uh, it's just not something that resonates with me. So so Philip gave me a, a whole list of songs, uh, particularly with the the big four, which is. Pearl Jam, Alice in Chains, Soundgarden, and Nirvana. Philip hates this, but uh, I I thought Nirvana was the best one. Wrong answer. Uh, don't worry, the rest of the world agrees with you, Seth, on that one. So I w- well, uh, looks like I'm in good company then. <sighs> Nirvana. Here's is, looking at you, viewers. Is, is wink. Not- well, you know, we'll dive in each band individually. We'll, 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 I'll, I'll, I'll wreck Nirvana here in a bit. I guess finish, give, give us your general thoughts okay. on your experience cool, with cool. grunge now. Uh, okay, so I, I mean, like Heart Shaped Box, I liked Cumbersome by, uh, who, who was it? That's Seven Mary Three. That's one of the random Seven Mary Three. 
Yeah, so that there there's both seven and three Marys all at once. It's incredible. Um, That's so many Marys. Seven it, times three, it, Mary. It is a miracle of the Virgin Maria, which is what they're <laughs> referencing in. Uh, I think it was uh, the actual origin of their band name is they couldn't think of a band name. They're watching like cops or something. And that was like a code that they read, they like read off on the show and they're like, fuck it. That's her name. <laughs> nice. Deep meaning. Um, I, well, I just, overall, I, 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 did I say I like daughter? I like daughter by Pearl Jam. Daughter's very Um, good. I, I don't know. It, it just felt like they they took the aspects, and, and Philip will disagree with me here, but they took the aspects of Led Zeppelin and Black Sabbath that made them kind of kitschy, but, and just, like, made that the entire theme. And no. for me, I didn't vibe with it. I just, I don't even understand that comparison, because they sound nothing like them like the closest would probably be Alice in Chains but even then they very much go off on their own thing it's like Alice in Chains is really so, other than some so, sound well, okay. the only one that really goes metal is Alice in Chains I I want to hear from you okay what, what exactly defines the grunge genre then how would you describe the music <sighs> okay well first off grunge isn't even really a genre it's a it was a media term used to kind of just throw mostly the big four together because they all popped up around the same time in seattle so they just kind of lumped them all together because really all four of them have very distinctive sounds the closest two that sound the most similar would be probably pearl jam and soundgarden but even then there's there's a pretty distinctive style difference i I couldn't get it what <laughs> the difference? I, I didn't. I couldn't tell the difference. You didn't even listen to Soundgarden. You didn't even get to them. Well, I mean, with Alice in Chains, that is. Um, which clear, clearly, clearly, <sighs> I'm wrong. Here. You're very wrong on Alice in Chains. Um, they sound nothing like any of the rest of them, dude. That makes no the, sense. The, okay, Alice in Chains. I mean, Philip said that that was going to be the band that I was going to like the most. And I, it just they have sounded the most technical like technical skill of all me. of them. Like they're 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 so it, skilled. I mean, probably, but I I wasn't listening. I I wasn't I, I was listening, I listening. <laughs> for I was listening for enjoyment. I wasn't listening to admire the talent. Um, Why else do you listen to music? To enjoy it. You can enjoy it and admire and like be like, wow, like I get enjoyment from things that I'm like, wow, this is really well made. That's why I enjoy something if it's well made. Hmm. Like, I don't I, know about. I, I don't that. understand. That. Like I don't understand that. That's like the appeal of of like. I'm sorry. How many, how many blockbusters? How have there been that have become cult classics, even though they're like the shittiest movies ever made? Like, well, I mean, there's a few, but like, there's only like for blockbusters, not that many that are just trash that are still like beloved. Okay, maybe maybe not blockbusters, but just films in general like you, you, sure you have things like the room but like that's that's also a case where it's so bad that people like the enjoyment comes from making fun of it i just like i don't i don't understand it, that of course you're going I, to like enjoy it, something it was like good. it was like listening to very heavy trap music for me where i just i just thought it was noise at a certain <sighs> point point. and obviously that isn't the case for all all of it just a, a a number of the songs. Uh, I don't I don't understand Seth, but uh, I just I I love I mean I love all of them. Nirvana much less so than the rest, but I love all of them. Like if I were to rank them, I would say Pearl Jam is my favorite. I I, I recognize that on a technical level, maybe they're not the best, but they were the ones that got me into the genre, and I love their their lyricism is far and beyond the rest of the bands. Like they like so many of their, of their songs either tell stories or have a very specific social commentary to it like the, the eddie vetter's lyricism is phenomenal that's where his talent is say what we will about his voice i like the eddie vetter voice i understand why people don't but his, his lyricism is where he shines he's an amazing lyricist but yeah it'd be pearl jam German, <laughs> even don't call me daughter. I'll be too. Um, 
I will say I didn't appreciate Pearl Jam as much until I actually looked up their lyrics and was like, oh, that's what he was saying. That is good. <laughs> well, and I mean, how how long were you listening to this music before you, you started looking up the lyrics? Because for me, I don't know really get the lyrics of any song until I've listened to it at least like five times, probably. Um. Well, I, I first, I really only got into grunge in the past like three years. But like I started dabbling in it. And then, like, I was just like, oh, this sounds good. And I, I like, I'm mostly Pearl Jam. Like, I was like, oh, this sounds good. But I didn't, like, understand what he was saying at all because Eddie better. But then, like, I started getting into it more and more. And I started uh, looking up the lyrics to Pearl Jam. I was like, this is really good. And then I started getting into the other bands, too, uh, after that. So, like, I mean, I probably, I guess, like, maybe a month or two, but, like, casually listening uh, before I, like, really got into them. And then, like, I just fell in love with the genre and it became like my main thing I listened to. Like for me, I would say Pearl Jam is my favorite, followed by Alice in Chains, then Soundgarden, then Nirvana. Of the big four. If we're including Stone Temple Pilots, I like them better than Nirvana. Hell, honestly, I think I'd rather listen to Bush than Nirvana most days. And I know that's going to get me hate if anyone is who cares is listening. But I, I really like Bush. Bush is fun. Honestly, I genuinely, you, you probably would like Bush, Seth. I, well, I, I was just listening to Bush. Bush was the last one I listened to, and I didn't hate it. I thought, uh, well, I, I was listening to, um, oh, what was it? They're a little more generic sounding to me, but also that's kind of their appeal, I feel like. Come Down. Come Down is okay. great. I love Come Down. I, I mean, I, I didn't hate it, but it also didn't really just, it didn't stand out to me. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to think what else by Bush you would really like. Because Bush is, like, I mostly listen to grunge because, like, I love the lyrics and the storytelling. Bush doesn't do as much of that for the most part. They're a little bit more just, like, making bops. Um, they're a little bit more on the poppy side of it. But, like, Come Down's really good. It's, it, that's a good one. Machine Head is just jams. I love Machine Head. I really like the, like, uh, I, this wasn't on your list, so I'm, I'm sure, I know you didn't hear it. But there's one called "Greedy Fly" by them that has an almost like creepy sound to it instrumentally. Like it's almost like I could see it being like the opening song to like a psychological horror. And like I, it, it just I don't know. It vibes with me. I, I like it. It's it's so weird. And it's very different from the rest of their sound. But I, I I do check out "Greedy Fly." That's not one that people talk about a lot, but that's a good one. Mm-hmm. What, what what are the thoughts you got, Seth? Oh, I'm trying to think of it. When I was I, I was reading the Wikipedia page for grunge to just kind of get like a basis for the the genre in general, mm-hmm. and there was there was one saw so, there, there was one band their their name really stood out to me. I'm I'm trying to think of what it was. I don't know. Green River, Mad Season, Mud no. Honey. It had buttholes in the name. Butthole Surfer. Butthole, butthole surfer. surfer, yeah. They're not really it's, grunge. They're a lot of, a lot of great artistry there. I, I, I really feel like if they were included in the great grunge pantheon, then maybe it would really <laughs> bump up the, uh, the, the sort of clout. You See, know? I, I'm very lenient with what I personally consider grunge. Butthole Surfers is not grunge. Gotcha. Um, they're just kind of there. I, I never got into them. Sorry, all you butthole surfer fans out there. <laughs> um, I mean, I mean, they have a fan base. Like, they people like them. I think. Uh, Some someone must. <laughs> the, the they're mobs. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. They're probably dead. Like most people, most artists, rock stars in that era. I I also I have never listened to a single corn song but i just found out that they might be grunge no they're new metal no if they were on the list they some idiot put them on they are very okay. much not grunge no then debate never there. mind i do i like corn actually but that they're new metal they are not nu dash metal um okay. they no they are not but, grunge so i i i just for, for context can you explain to me a distinction between metal and grunge? I know they are completely different, mm-hmm. but I, I want to... Well, so they're... 
I, I kind of see grunge as almost like, in a way, it's almost a gateway drug to metal. Um, so basically, metal. Well, first of all, there's a billion different types of metal. We'll just go with like, well, we'll go with like you kind of standard like Black Sabbath, uh, Metallica, just for frame of reference for people. Well, we'll go with that kind of. It's more very guitar heavy, very uh, harsh sounds, very usually very fast paced, but not necessarily. It's it just kind of a harsher sound would be the biggest thing. And, and a lot of the subgenres of metal have like, there's like black metal and death metal where it's either like screaming or like the raspy growl. I, I, I always get the two confused, black and death. One of them is the growl. One of them's the, and one's just like a, like a lower growl sound. That'll be good on the audio podcast. I, I, feel I, like, I feel like, wait, what, what were the two names again? Black metal and death metal. I think I, I want to say like black, black metal, metal would be, uh, yeah, and I, death would be. Uh, that's what I think, but I would have to fact check. I'm not nearly as informed on metal as I should be. Okay. I'm much more like. And, and which one is Cannibal Corpse? My favorite metal. I think I want to say they're death metal, but they might just be their own thing. They're like far end of the spectrum. I, I like. I, I I have only dabbled in metal. I like Rammstein, the German dance metal band. Okay. They're, I love them. Um, they're actually really good. Uh, and like, I actually kind of like new metal. New metal gets kind of a bad rap, but uh, like, that's like Corn, Disturbed, Stained. I think it's technically new metal. Um, I think Tool counts as metal. Um, they're not new metal. They're they're their own thing. But Tool's mm. pretty good. Honestly, the the biggest thing that makes grunge grunge is honestly kind of unfortunately. Like, that's why I said the grunge isn't even really a real genre. It's really when was this song made? Does it sound kind of in this? like general vibe of like basically you know poor white kids want to start a band a rock band and it sounds like poor white kids started a rock band but then they just exploded because of the lyrics and the kind of rebel against the system vibes and well, the media and I, just kind of lumped them all together especially the big four because they all came from seattle at the same time i i think it's grunge is is kind of a a testament to how a lot of these very specific distinctions of genre are very rooted in in time and geography mm-hmm. like there there are overarching things like pop rock or or, or yeah. uh, metal that i mean can happen at any time but there are certain things that are very dependent on when and where they came out of, and that's how they're grouped. Yeah, like there's a lot of people that will very strictly say that only the big four are grunge bands, that everyone, even Stone Temple Pilots isn't, because they came from California and not Seattle. Like there are some people who are very adamant that grunge is just Pearl Jam, Nirvana, Alice in Chains, Soundgarden, because they came from Seattle, in the early 90s that's that's what grunge is to a lot of people personally i'm a little more liberal with it i and that's a that's a be- beautiful thing is there's arguments on what grunge is like what counts as a grunge band like um i would say the big four stone temple pilots bush seven mary three silver chair candle box there's there's a bunch um just anyone in that kind of general time frame and a even remotely similar sound like that's just kind of rock just kind of was grunge for a lot of the 90s outside of like metal and specific niches yeah rock kind of just became grunge for a second and then left again but mm. so but honestly i'm very liberal with what i would call a grunge band but boy are you going to be surprised when t swizzle drops her new <laughs> grunge album next <laughs> everything she has ever created is gold um, <sighs> fucking Taylor Swift. If you had to pick one T Swizzle song that had to be taken in under the fold of grunge, which one would you? Hold on, I gotta think about that. Oh God, honestly. And why is it blank space? Honestly, blank space wouldn't be terrible. I was honestly gonna say, look what you made me do. <laughs> yeah, no, I can see that. <laughs> uh, not a good grunge song, but a grunge song nonetheless. Um. Okay. Nirvana sucks. 
So did Courtney Love kill Kurt Cobain? No. Okay. That's a stupid myth. It's fucking stupid. Did he, he, uh, I don't know how deep we want to go, but like, dude is suicidal his entire fucking like career and also had a crippling heroin addiction. The dude fucking shot himself. Like, Which is why it's the perfect alibi. <laughs> Wink. Like, it's so dumb, man. Like, literally, I mean, like, literally three, I mean, three of the four lead grunge singers of the big four killed themselves. Like, uh, Cobain shot himself in the head. Lane Staley of Alice in Chains uh, overdosed. Um, And then Chris Cornell killed himself a few years ago. It's it's rough, man. And, like, that's the thing is because, like, they wallowed in their darkness a lot like you know because they're like they they did sing about real shit and also that gets to you yeah um yeah it's rough man eddie vetter's still kicking he's he's the last one and, and the guy from bush he's still around oh scott wyland i think also killed himself of uh Sentinel pilots pretty sure they all killed themselves well <laughs> that one i'm sad philip <laughs> <laughs> now i feel bad about talking bad about them yeah, they're all dead, Seth. <laughs> like literally, they're literally grunge is dead. <laughs> like, okay, so, so is is Pearl Jam's new album grunge? What's your what, being one of the big four? Whatever you make, I'm I'm still gonna say is grunge. Um, they, in terms of pure sound, their newest album is very dad rock soundy for the most part. Like they have a song called Super Blood Wolf Moon. It was their second single. That is just like the most dad rock song I've ever heard in my life. It's it's just so generic. And you're super blood wolf moon took her away too soon. And that's the song. It's not uh, it is not my standard of Pearl Jam. But there was another song on that album actually called Dance of the Clairvoyance, which all, did not sound grunge at all uh, by by um, typical standards. But it was their best song in like three albums. Because it was just, it was a very new sound for them. It had very clear uh, social commentary, very powerful, clear social commentary. I love it. Uh, it got a lot of mixed reactions because it is such a different sound. It was very like synthy and poppy, kind of, which is yeah. weird for Pearl Jam, but like it, it worked. And like it still, and it had, it had a little bit of angry Vetter, angry Eddie. He, you know, he yelled a little bit. You know, I, I, you, you have to see, I like it when like, uh, I mostly gave you other than daughter. I think I mostly gave you kind of some of their harder songs. Mm-hmm. Honestly, you might like them more if I, I might try and pick out some of their softer ones. Cause you might like that side of them more. I, I like angry Eddie. I like when he's yelling. Mm-hmm. Uh, like I love do the evolution. I'm sure you didn't because it's oh, the I, closest I they've not. come to metal, uh, uh, is do the evolution. I love that one. Um, but also I, I like when grunge i like i don't i'm not a huge metal guy but i love when grunge bands lean metal <laughs> it's like a good middle ground for me but i love do the evolution that's i mean it's it's the entire social commentary of that song is like how mankind's arrogance and narcissism is like killing our planet and we've just like overwhelmed ourselves with like our own uh narcissism as a species well see i already know that though this was the 90s, though. This was even this was before Al Gore had Inconvenient Truth. This was a song about humanity killing the planet before we knew we were killing the planet. Well, that's what Joni Mitchell and uh, Yellow Taxi Cab was for. What? Yeah, Yellow Taxi Cab. Big Yellow Taxi. Big Yellow Taxi. Oh, yeah. The, the... That Counting Crows had the yeah, yeah, yeah. discover of. Yeah. I didn't that's a cover. I, I I did not know until recently. Apparently it's a cover. Well, my dad was making fun of me because I was like, "Oh, I never realized the Counting Crow ver- Crows version was a cover." I thought that and was their he's song. like, "Um, yeah, are you are you stupid?" No, I wow, I didn't know that either. I, that was and that's like their big song too. <laughs> and and then uh the other day I was playing um When the Levee Breaks and he's like, "Hey, Seth, who sings that? And Mississippi Joe, obviously. It was written in the 20s. I don't know or, that song. Or, Memphis, 
when the levee breaks, I don't it, think it's I Led Zeppelin. It's a Led. Well, oh. Led Zeppelin is the famous one. Gotcha. But I, yeah, it's a cover. Speaking of covers, I do actually really want to bring up first point. I I just want to make a bold claim. I think Chris Cornell is one of the greatest vocalists of all time. You really should go back and listen to more Soundgarden because his vocals, like I, I placed Soundgarden as my third favorite of the grunge bands just because lyricism is my big thing. And I feel like Alice in Chains and Pearl Jam both have better lyrics. Mm-hmm. But Chris Cornell's voice was phenomenal. Like he had an incredible range. Like honestly, I genuinely think like he's not not even the best grunge singer. I think he's one of the best singers of all time. Like he should be in the same conversation as Michael Jackson, Johnny Cash, Freddie Mercury. Like I'm not saying he's better than them, but I think he should be in the same conversation. Because his range is just fucking phenomenal. Like he was able to power belt, which is something very few people can do without destroying their throats. And he did it for 20, 30 years. Mm. And he, you know, um, Jesus Christ pose, if any of you listen to that, he sings in three different voices in that song. And in my opinion, they're all great. Seth would probably disagree. But um, he sings in three different ranges in that song. Um, And then... I I will say, I I did enjoy the Billie Jean cover. I I thought it was very good. That's what I was going to bring up uh, going off of covers is I love that cover. Uh, Chris Cornell specifically, not Soundgarden. Chris Cornell did a cover of Billy Jean by Michael Jackson. And honestly, I'm going to be even more bold here. I like the cover better than the original, and I really like Billy Jean. Billy Jean's my favorite Michael Jackson song. I would not go that far. I, I, well, I would just say the two are very different, and mm-hmm. the two are both very good. And that's I very don't... fair. That's valid. Yeah. My thing is like I just I like that. He slows it down. It becomes this like mournful ballad, this like like song. And like you know, Billy Jean was like he, Michael Jackson was. It was it was a painful song. It was an emotional song, but I feel like you really felt that in Chris Cornell's cover where he slows it down. He really wallows in it, and then combine that with his just he just fucking belts it out, man. Like it's just I love that cover, man. It's so good. The Billy Jean Chris Cornell cover. Please look it up. I it doesn't get enough love. That's that's probably one of the best examples I can think of, of Chris Cornell's voice. He it's just fucking beautiful. I I love that cover. Let's see what else we got. Should I should I should we should I bash Nirvana? I don't know. Oh, well, okay, first off, Seth, what is your favorite Nirvana song? If you say "Smells Like Teen Spirit," I'm punching you over the webcam. Am I about to punch you over the webcam? Is that what's about to happen? I think so. Yeah. Bam. <laughs> Um, I, well, okay. In its defense, I will say the first time I ever heard it was on the Muppets, and I might have preferred the Muppets. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even remember that in the Muppets. I don't, damn. I don't remember no, that. I, I mean, I, I, I do like Smells Like Teen Spirit. I, I would not say that the favorite, my favorite song of the grunge songs you made me listen to was even from Nirvana. I would just say as a whole, they had the most ones that I appreciated. Mm-hmm. Um, what would you I, say is I, your favorite grunge song you listen to? Is it Cumbersome or? Probably Cumbersome. Um, Daughter, is, Daughter is a close second. I, I did, I really liked Frances Farmer Will Have Her Revenge on Seattle. That's I my liked favorite Come Nirvana As You song. Are. Um, Heart Shaped Box is pretty popular. I do like Heart Shaped like Box, too. yeah. Um, okay, so, okay, I, I will say, I think In Utero is a very good album. It's, it's kind of hit or miss. There's some songs on it I absolutely hate, but mm-hmm. there's also definitely the most songs that I love off of In Utero. I think, I think Nevermind is an incredibly overrated album. There's definitely good songs on it, but it's overplayed. People act like it's the only fucking grunge album. They act like Smells Like Teen Spirit's the only grunge song. And like Smells Like Teen Spirit isn't even their best song in my opinion like i think i I, yeah i would i would absolutely agree with that like all apologies um is great uh uh heart shaped box is great i my personal favorite is francis farmer will have a revenge on seattle which not doesn't get enough love definitely check that out you like grunge at all even seth likes it so if you please check it out um so so if uh what was that philip the fact that what's up (laughs) What well, what was the rest of that sentence? Please. 
if, if Seth manages to like a good song, then you know what? That more it shows you that it's a very good song. <laughs> Even he can appreciate it. <laughs> I can't wait to go cry after this. <laughs> Um, but, you know, I love Francis Farmer will have revenge in Seattle. It's a, it's a lot to say. <laughs> it's a bit of a tongue twister, but, uh, it, it's very under underrated. It's, it's a great sound. I love it. Please check it out. Um, if you're even remotely a grunge or Nirvana fan, I don't even know what I would say. My favorite song off of, uh, nevermind is it might be come as you are. I'm pretty sure it's off of nevermind. I, I, that might be my favorite off the album on a plane is pretty good. I didn't, that wasn't one of the ones I gave to you. I just sounds like Teen Spirit. Just like I, I, I I'll admit, I, I I kind of have hipsterious reasons to not like it. It's just that every because like it's not a bad song. Like I'll still jam out to it. It's I, catchy the, as fuck. The thing for me, I think, is smells like Teen Spirit is just kind of like the go-to grunge song in the public subconscious. Like whether it's representative of grunge or not, that is the go-to song, mm-hmm. and that is why it is so overplayed yeah and that's and that's what like i think because like i think there's so much more in the genre that people don't realize that there is so much depth like in like you know pearl jam's daughter is a song about this girl who has a learning disability that her parents don't understand and they treat her shitty because of it but she ultimately and she thinks it's the child blames themselves for like why their her parents hate her or shitty to her but eventually she rises above it and realizes that like she can move past this. It's not her fault. That's powerful shit, man. And then Nirvana's just like, a mosquito, my libido. Yeah. It's like, did you ever stop to think that maybe the random words were a commentary? I honestly, if even if they are, I don't care. (laughs) (laughs) I don't care. It's just, it's also, I, I don't I'm get, sorry. What was what was that, Philip? I don't you, think Nirvana has that you don't subtlety care? in them. I don't think Nirvana has that level of subtlety in them. Mm-hmm. Like they just like they're they're very in your face. We're edgy. The like that's just they're just go to. And yes, I realize how hipster I sound. I'm, I'm literally an edgy hipster right now. Like I'm I'm his, hipster about edginess. <laughs> that's how much of an edgy hipster I am. Um, but like, they're just, it just feels, I don't want to say fake because clearly Kurt Cobain had some fucking demons, but like, I don't know. It just, I don't, it didn't come across in their songs to me. Like other than a few exceptions, like I, I think Francis Farmer will have revenge in Seattle is very real and, and poignant. I think all apologies is good. Come as you are, you know, all those good songs. Uh, Serve the Servants is pretty good. That's I don't think it's one I had you listen to, but um, that one's good. I don't know. It's just uh, they just have I, I have a love hate relationship with Nirvana. It's it's a hard it's hard for me to place, but like I just if I have a choice between any of the big four, they're usually going to be the last ones I pick to listen to. And and again, like even some Temple Pilots and Bush, I'll usually play more than I play in Nirvana. So yeah, you, you didn't listen to any Sun Temple Pilots, did you? I think I did. I don't think I liked them. They, it's, it's, the ones I gave you, I think, were more on the metal side. Mm. Um, Dead and Bloated definitely was. Uh, oh, wait. They were... Hold up. Let me... Yeah, no. Uh, Stone Temple Pilots was... Uh, uh, Vaseline, Meat Plow, Dead and Bloated, Sex... No, I did not listen to a single one because they all scared me. The titles <laughs> scared me. You actually might like Vaseline. Um, <laughs> that, like, believe it or not, no, like, I'm being serious. Like, it's not um, nearly as harsh sounding as Meat Plow or definitely, you, you will not like Dead and Bloated. I can tell you that right now. It's, that's okay. just very, very harsh. Um, love it. I love it, but you will, you will not. You will hate it. When, when um, are we listening to uh, Peter like Paul Meadow. and Mary? Peter Paul and Mary. I don't know the, them. They're, they're classic folk. Oh. But like hippie folk. Oh, boy. Um, uh, next week. Blah, 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 blah. Um, goodness gracious. Let's see. I, I'm gonna, we're going to revisit Grunge at some point. I'm going to do a Seth-specific list. I'm going to, now that I know what he can tolerate. It's, uh, it's going to be five years from now, but... <laughs> 
five episodes from now? Five years from now, we'll be able to. <laughs> I'm going to make a very Seth-specific list. I know, I know what I can... I, honestly, it's going to be a lot more Bush-heavy. It's going to... That sound, that's a sentence. Um, <laughs> v- very Bush-heavy. Very Bushy. Um, um, we're adults. A real heavy Bush. <laughs> the heaviest. Um, lots of Bush. Lots of... Lots of um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm a 23 year old man. I'm laughing. I, I'm I'm a child. <laughs> um. Anyway, uh, you already listened to the two Seven Mary Three. Oh, I, I do want to talk about Seven Mary Three actually. Um. So you you listened to both Cumbersome and Water's Edge, correct? Yeah. Okay. You said you definitely preferred Cumbersome. Yeah. Give me your thoughts. I thought it was good. Why? I have I have no further. The sound was not as cumbersome as I found other grunge songs to be. Cumbersome is definitely, it's a very mainstream kind of sounding song from that time frame and genre. It's very, it's a lot more poppy. It's very catchy. There's a reason that like a lot of people know Cumbersome because that plays on the radio a lot, but no one knows Seven Mary Three. (laughs) They were very much a one hit wonder band, which is a shame because in my personal opinion, I think Water's Edge is the better song. What, what did you think of Water's Edge, Seth? I didn't think it was very memorable. I mean, I didn't hate it. It was, it was definitely one of those songs that, like, I didn't dislike, but I, I, I just, I, I wouldn't go out of my way to listen to it. See, that one is, I will give you, instrumentally, it's a little more on the simple side. But that's because, like, and because you haven't, you don't really pay attention to the lyrics which is you know fair that's how you listen i guess um that's one that it's the lyrics that are really what's important okay. in that song like it, that is a song it's one of those storytelling songs where it's about this guy who people find this dead body on the side of like a riverbed and everyone's like oh hey don't go down there don't see you don't want to see that it's it's hor- horrific you don't want to see this but the guy, the lead, the singer, had seen, not only had he already seen it, he saw who killed the person and dumped them into the river. And he's wrestling with this guilt of like, why didn't I do anything to stop this? Why haven't I told anybody? People will think I was involved in it. Oh God. And it's him wrestling with this guilt of like, what can I do? Why didn't I do anything? And it's, it's this huge, like, it's a song about wrestling with guilt of like, what happens when you don't act and now you feel like it's too late to act and he's scared that the people who did this crime will come back and kill him if he says something it's powerful shit man it's just a, it's, a, it's a whole story and like i love it it's like that's 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 why i like grunge is because like you get these stories and these like you know complex uh th- you know things you struggle with like We're- jeremy and like See, but I, I, I can definitely see the appeal of that. And I mean, that's one of the reasons why I really like folk music is because a lot of that is storytelling <laughs> through a, a musical. That's why uh, I like Johnny Cash. I, I love Johnny Cash. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I definitely want to make you listen to... Uh, I, I, I said that as a joke, but I actually want to make you listen to uh, Peter, Paul, and Mary's Greatest Hits. Uh, sure. Uh, are we just are we slowly becoming like a music podcast <laughs> yeah I, I i hate that because i i i definitely do want to like mix up the formats i definitely do want to go to movies and t- tv shows but yeah been, i mean th- there's just so much music topics that yeah and it's also it's, it's a little bit easier to like do me like i can like i listen to the taylor swift albums while i was like writing or something yeah like you can even like like I would, I, I I prefer to do deep dives of music and like really pay attention to lyrics, but like you can kind of get away with not doing that, or at least like you don't have to do it for every single song. Um, and like, but with a movie, you have to sit there and want full attention the whole time. And yeah. you know, both of us have uh, sometimes fluctuating schedules, maybe less so right now. But yeah, we're, we're some music podcasts now. It's great. We we are a uh, a music podcast with a little bit of fuzz on the beginning and the end. <laughs> <laughs> yep, uh, you know a little bit of buffer uh, buffer room there. Okay, um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I want to bring up before we move on. Jeremy's great. That's another great story based song. It's it's uh, that might be my favorite grunge song. Jeremy and Water's Edge are both up there for me. Uh, 
I'm, I'm just going to do some quick shout outs of songs I think you people should listen to that I don't think people have heard as much real quick. Um, Rats by Pearl Jam. I uh, not like Rats. I love Rats. It's, initial, it's another social commentary one uh, about how humans are just as bad, not worse than rats. <laughs> it's great. I love it. And it's a, it's a much more edgy kind of sound. Um, so, of course, Seth didn't like it. Let's see. Oh, I really want to talk about Mad Season. I don't think you listen to them at all. That's the super group that Lane Staley of Alice in Chains formed with uh, two or three members of Pearl Jam. And it's a very, you actually might like Mad Season, Seth. Um, they had one album uh, called Above. It's, it's, a, it's a lot softer and kind of introspective. And I love it. It's, it's the album I put on when like, if I'm like having like anxiety or something, I'll go for a walk. I'll, I'll bring my headphones and I'll listen to that whole album. And that like calms me down and soothes me. Amazing album. There's some, there's, there's a couple of like harder songs on it, but for the most part, it's pretty mellow and just introspective. Great album. Please check out Mad Season, uh, their album above. Wonderful album. I wish they'd done more, but there's just a one-off project for them. Uh, also Temple of the Dog. They, they were also a super group with Chris Cornell as the lead singer. That was uh, formed after... Andrew Wood, I believe is his name, the lead singer of Mother Love Bone, which is basically the first grunge band. He died. He overdosed. That's a running theme in grunge. And uh, that was at the very beginning. And then they made Temple of the Dog as like a tribute to him. And then after that, Pearl Jam formed from the surviving members of Mother Love Bone and Eddie Vedder. They formed to make Pearl Jam. Hmm. As a little fun fact. Uh, that is interesting. Yeah. So technically... If you if you just consider Mother Love Bone like the original form of Pearl Jam, every single big four <laughs> grunge uh, big four of the bands had a lead singer kill themselves one way or another. <laughs> Bringing it back to pressing. <laughs> so anyway, Sp- um, speaking of death, I wouldn't <laughs> say I'm anti grunge, <laughs> but I'm definitely not pro. I, I respect people's right to <laughs> enjoy grunge. I, you know what? That's progress, given our last couple of conversations about grunge. So I feel like I've done good work here. I think my work here is done. Hey, you're, you're lucky I didn't make that joke about Pearl Jam having no creativity. Um, it doesn't even make sense. Okay, no, I'm not going to make the joke, because we've gotten to that point in the conversation where it would just be in bad taste. Pearl Jam is great. They're my favorite. They're all very good. Please go listen to Grunge. Go listen. Check out Seven Mary Three and Bush. Uh, Silver Chair and Candlebacks are also quite good. Uh, definitely check out Mad Season, Audio Slave. That was uh, the other Chris Cornell band. Blah, 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 blah. Cornell band. That they're also very good. Less grungy. So, are you pro or anti grunge, Philip? I'm extremely pro grunge stuff. I can't even make the joke. I can't even be like, yeah, no, I hate it. I can't. I can't even say those words. Mm-hmm. I, it's my favorite genre, quote unquote. It's basically all I listen to nowadays. I'll mix it up every now and then. But I, I love it. I love the storytelling. I love the lyrics. Nirvana is okay. They're the worst of the four. Mosquito, my libido. Yeah. Here we are now. Entertain us. Because you don't get it, Philip. Your IQ is not high enough. Nirvana isn't like other bands. You just have to you have to open your mind. Oh, Bleach is their other album. That's okay. <laughs> they have three albums. That's it, because then he fucking killed himself. Yay! So what's right. our mystery topic for the day, Philip? So speaking of death. Oh no. I swear, if you zoom me into a funeral, sir. <laughs> Damn it, you spoiled the surprise. Wait, I haven't checked CNN in the last few hours. Is Eddie Vedder okay? I hope so. Dude, if we killed Eddie Vedder, I'm going to cry. I will actually have tears. Mm. I love that man who can't enunciate to save his life. Oh, that's the problem. That's how it goes. Uh... So this is also music-based. It's only episode three, but it feels like we've come so far from Milk and Cocoa. <laughs> it's so long ago. 
Uh, We're so much older now. It's true. We've gotten very edgy, especially when you see what I'm showing you. Okay, Seth, I think I've decided, I'm, since you showed me a 10-minute monstrosity last week, I'm going to give you two songs to listen to off of Death Note, the musical concept album. <laughs> okay, well, that, that's fine. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I recently, through help of a friend, discovered that the Death Note musical is a thing that exists. Um, it's only, so it was written in English, but then only performed in Japan and Korea. But there is a, a complete English concept album made, and it's not the worst thing I've ever heard. I'm sure it's phenomenal. I actually kind of liked it. I listened to the whole album straight through. Uh, have you, okay, have you ever seen anything Death Note, Seth? Nope. Okay. Not a single thing. <laughs> I know people were upset a few years ago because they whitewashed the entire cast. Yeah. And, and see, I, I feel like people may have been more forgiving if it was actually a good movie, but apparently it wasn't even that, so. I know that there's a note that if you make a note, it brings death. Okay, so I'm going to give you super quick synopsis of Death Note. <laughs> okay. So there's these um, basically angels of death. They have these death notes that any time it's time for someone to die, they write a person's name in the book and that person dies. They can specify how a person dies, etc. But that's how they do it. Well, there's this one Shinigami named Ryuk who he's just bored. He's sick of the routine. So he says, fuck it. What happens if I drop this omen of death into the world and let a human have the power of death so he drops his notebook and this random kid named light gets it he discovers its power and then he decides i'm going to be i'm going to purge all the evil in this world i'm going to kill every wrong person and i'm going to basically be the god of this world and i because i have a right sense of justice yeah exactly so he starts killing off criminals and stuff with it and all sorts of, and, and then, then anyone who tries to stop him too, he tries to kill too. And there's this character named L, who his, he's this super brainiac guy too. And he's like, he's trying to stop Light from killing everybody. He doesn't, it takes him a while to figure out who Light is. And they play this like kind of chess game, trying to figure out each other and stuff. It's very, it's a good anime. Um, I never finished it because uh, I heard the last arc get kind of weird, but um, it's a cool concept. It's, it's a lot of fun, very dark and edgy as you can guess by Death Note. But it's good. It's, a, it's, about these, it's mostly about these two and their mind game and their differing senses of justice and how each of them are willing to do whatever it takes to achieve their goals. One, to purge all the injustices in his mind, and the other, to stop this one person who he sees as evil. Gotcha. But he also will do anything to get his way. So it's, 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 very, it's actually very interesting. Sounds good. And uh, the musical, it's a musical about that. <laughs> there's let's, some let's random pop songs. There's some, it's weird. But honestly, I didn't hate it. And I'm going to give you, I'm going to send you the links to um, two songs. I'm going to give you Light's first song, which is uh, Where's the Justice? It's him like struggling with like why why is why why can't we do anything to stop all these evil people? Why aren't we doing more? And this is before he finds the Death Note. And then I'm going to give you Secrets and Lies, which is a I think technically what's the so duet is two people. What's it called? And there's three people. A triet. <laughs> sure. I don't. Um, I don't know. Uh, oh, that's another thing. Uh, his Light's dad is a cop, like a head chief of the police force help too so that adds a whole other layer to it so that's a trio i guess between l the guy trying to stop light light and then his dad and it's like the beginning of like you know what is what what's happening yada yada so i'm going to give you those two songs so okay. where is the justice and secrets and lies off of the death note concept album and i will i'll drop links to both of those specifically and i'm also going to give the link to the playlist of the uh, entire musical concept album because honestly i think it's worth listen like it's cheesy it's over the top but i think it works honestly i i hate that i don't hate it i'll be the judge of that just like light thinks Thank he is the judge you. of mankind incredible did you finish Life the first changing. one <laughs> do you finish where's the justice 
where is the justice? Where is it? Um, and also, a quick, uh, Kira is the name of um, Light's like alter ego, the like public face of this god of death, because he doesn't want people to know he's Light yet. Yeah, so if, if they mention Kira in the next song, that's they're talking about Light, but no one knows that it's Light except Light. Gotcha. So that was really good. I I really enjoyed both of those. Um, I think, well, I think I might have liked Secrets and Lies a little bit more, mm-hmm. um, particularly because I felt like, uh, I felt like Where's the Justice was a lot more about kind of the the themes of, of Death Note, whereas mm-hmm. Secrets and Lies was a lot more of like, kind of actually telling the story, to, like the yeah. storytelling and referencing specific things. Yeah, for um, sure. And I, I was kind of just getting into it. Also, while I was listening to Secrets and Lies, I was reading a synopsis of, of Death Notes. So that probably <laughs> helped me to. Yeah. But I, no, I, I thought those were both really good. And I, I'm, I'm upset that it never went anywhere in the States. Well, there is still, it might, because apparently there, unfortunately, won't be the same voice cast, I imagine, because that was recorded in like 2015. So it almost definitely yeah. won't be the same cast, unfortunately, because the cast is actually great. It's great casting choices for the concept album. Like all their voices are incredible. But yeah, no. Um, so they actually started another tour in either Japan or South Korea, one of them, because like I said before, they're only touring there. Um, mm-hmm. They started another tour at the beginning of this year. So there was a plan at least to like get it going again. Um, and maybe eventually one in the States. Because like, that's the thing, like uh, when my friend told me about this, like they didn't realize that it had even been made and they said it like as a joke it's like at least the, the death note musical didn't get made but then like we looked it up and there actually was one and then i actually listened to it and it's like this is actually kind of good like it's a decent musical like it's not like the best thing i've ever heard yeah. but like it's i enjoyed it i listened to the whole album and there's a couple of songs missing unfortunately off of the what i found on youtube mm-hmm. Uh, so there's a couple holes in the story, unfortunately, that I'm sure are probably filled through both dialogue and the missing songs. It's a yeah. solid concept album. Like, I actually would really like to see this performed. I think it holds up. Yeah. Like, and it has a good sound to it. I like it. It's, it's like, has, and, and there's, a, there's some other different styles of music in there. There's a couple more poppy songs uh, and stuff like that throughout it. But like the general, it has kind of a soft rock kind of sound to it. But it, it, me- it meshes with the tone, I think, and it's just very stylized, and I like that. It's good. I, it's, a, it's a solid thing, I, and I was kind of upset that I didn't hate it. <laughs> yeah. Because hear, you hear Death Note the musical. That sounds fucking stupid. Yes, <laughs> but there's also a lot of musical t- uh, like topics I've heard that I thought were going to be stupid and ended up being good true so yeah there's been all sorts of things that like everyone thought were like i mean when people first heard about the spongebob musical they thought it'd be shit but then everyone loved it i i will never appreciate the spongebob well i never watched SpongeBob. Okay. if if a spongebob musical can be on broadway there is no way that this should not be <laughs> um, well unfortunately spongebob has a much bigger appeal in the u.s than death note does so Touche. We'll probably never get Death Note on Broadway, which is a shame because, like I said, like honestly, legitimately, if you're listening, especially if you've ever liked Death Note in any degree, and even if you haven't, because like Seth, like what he heard, even if you're just like a musical person, yeah, like if you like musicals and or like Death Note, give it a listen. Especially if you're like kind of soured after the Netflix adaptation, this is a decent adaptation. Like it's unique, it's different, and like. It's not terrible. There's some rough songs on it for sure. There's a couple that I was like, eh. But like, that's, that's also the case with any musical. Um, that yeah. there's going to be songs you don't appreciate as much as others. But everything with Light and L, like they have a few duets in it. It's, their duets are amazing. Like the back and forth and it really captures the tone of the story of this kind of back and forth game they're playing. They did a good job writing this. Like it's a solid concept musical, and I really I hope they make it someday. I hope it it, it gets a U.S. Uh, tour or production, because like I actually think it's a solid musical. 
Seth, are you going to uh, listen to the entire concept album? I am not. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you should. It's good. Yeah. Well, I mean, it also took me forever to listen to Hades Town, um, I'm, I'm which was actually that. recommended by the same friend, coincidentally. Oh yeah, um, she mentioned that to me. Yeah. But I, uh, I, I mean, it took me forever to actually listen to that, but I, I loved that too. Yeah. No, so. I definitely need to check it out. Um, the, honestly, I, I haven't listened to as many musicals as I should. I do love musicals. I just haven't heard as many as I should. Um, well, it's it's just a, a very big commitment. Like it's it's musicals are best for long car rides. Mm-hmm. Um because otherwise you just don't have the time like I, I it literally took me two years from getting into Hamilton music and then actually listening to the whole playlist yeah um because I just I never had the time like mm-hmm. the only reason why I ever listened to Hades Town all the way through was because my car was in the shop and I was walking half an hour to campus every day mm-hmm yeah, I I mean the only reason I, I I listened to Death Note on a whim, like I I I wasn't able to sleep. It was like eight a.m. I just could not fall asleep. I, I like I was up all night, and I was like, I right, I just can't fall asleep. I've been talking to our mutual friend about it, uh, Death Note the musical, and I was like, you know, what? fuck it, I want to see for myself how bad this is. And then I I just listened to the whole thing. It was actually like good. Yeah. I I was happily surprised with Death Note the musical um definitely if you like musical theater if you like death note it's not bad like don't, it's again it's not it's not the best thing in the world like there's definitely definitely better musicals but i was happily surprised with it i was like i i would i would see this show if they made it like i would i would want to see this show and would it be a life-changing experience probably not but i think it would, it would be a solid enjoyable show and i kind of hope they bring it to do an american production at some point uh, cause it's, it's honestly not bad. Yeah. You know, maybe some tune-ups, uh, on some of the songs, but like, otherwise I, I think it's pretty decent. Yeah. Any other thoughts, Seth, on Death Note, the musical, the English concept album? If I was making a Broadway adaptation, I would do, you Uly- no, Ulysses is already a musical. Never mind. I, so. I don't. I. I really. I can't come up with anything good. I don't think anything should be adapted to a, a musical until I actually listen to it, and then I'm <laughs> like, oh, this is actually good. I. I still haven't brought myself to listen to Legally Blonde, and because it's it's one of my favorite movies. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. I'm surprised that uh, there hasn't been like a Star Wars musical, honestly. Yeah. Oh, like I think I think Star Trek would actually adapt very well as a musical. Well, which series? Which one? It's all of them. I mean, all of them. I mean, Next Generation kind of, kind of fits itself for that sort of thing. But I, I feel like the original series would probably be the best to have a musical with. Mm-hmm. That'd be interesting. You know, what? I I'm on board for it. Make the Star Trek musical. Do it. Now, maybe it's already Dude. a thing. I didn't realize Death Note the musical was already a thing. Like it was just a joke. I, I, I actually looked it up. I don't know how I'd feel. No, Doctor Who should never be a musical. <laughs> no, I know, I know, I know. The Star Kids or whoever they are already did something like that. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh God. Um. Yeah. I check out. I I am pro Death Note the musical the English concept album. <laughs> I, I I am pro. I am pro uh, Death Note, the musical, English concept album, too. There you go. We are both pro Death Note, the musical, the English concept album. Yeah. Can we we call that the episode? Just episode three, Death Note, the musical, the concept album. Yes. What a a tongue. What what a lot of words that I I like saying over and over again. Yeah. Check it out, guys. I I believe it or not, it's actually not terrible. Okay. So, uh... Get ready for for next week when I utterly and completely emasculate Philip, um, and also we'll talk about three new topics. Uh, okay, so, why are you doing this to me? 
Well, we gotta keep the uh, the viewers coming ma- uh, coming back for more. That's the teaser. Is that what they want? That's that's a, yeah. It's a teaser. Next that's week. What people in the industry do. But like, we're not gonna do that though. Well, Don't come back next that. week when find I out. Cry. That's more. That's more realistic. Boom. Roast. Here we are now. Entertain us. I'm Nirvana. And I have long blonde hair. I'm I'm a yeah. Yeah. All right, that's it. Fuck off. Just kidding. Do, do. I'm coming over Can we talk about Johnny Cash? Maybe not next week because we need something that's not a music based thing. I'd like to talk about Johnny Cash. We can we finally can we finally talk about Parasite next week? Yeah, we can talk about Parasite. Okay, next week Parasite and two other things. So watch Parasite. Boom. And Death Note the musical of the English concept album. <laughs> bye bye. Bye.